Hey everybody, we had Kevin Boyer and Don Higgins from Real World Wildlife Products come to the lodge, um, Josh's lodge, and we did a video with them and then they went ahead and toured the lodge, um, kind of just to look at it and see kind of, you know, how the layout was. And they gave us a few tips, they gave us some advice that we thought was so good, we wanted to bring it to you guys. Um, and to make sure that you know we shared it with you guys so that you guys could apply this to your property I, I know this isn't gonna be like Specific to your farm, but if you do like Jerry and I are doing we're both gonna be looking at these um, Under the strategy and the philosophy that, that Don and, and Kevin gave us and We're gonna you know see what see if we can make any changes or see if there's anything that we can do along those same lines that will help our farm help our hunting and help our properties so um like i said we wanted to share this with you pretty much i'm just gonna run the raw footage so you guys can see uh <clears throat> what they said and you know hopefully it helps you guys out thanks for watching we'll see you guys next week i mean there's over forty thousand different soybeans right so when we when we look at it you know we're looking at for strengths and shadow resistance and oil and yeah. and then if even you plant it out there there's been guys that have slowly found out that you know, just because you plant soybeans don't mean the deer are going to eat them. There's certain soybeans the deer don't like the taste of, whether it's the green leaves or the, the pods. Mm -hmm. Do you find so, that through uh, through the entire region, or just, or is it different no, just from place to place? Or is that certain varieties? Certain varieties, certain varieties like that? yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And like I say, we tested 318 varieties out of over 40,000. So there's a lot of them we didn't get to test, but mm -hmm. we we found enough good enough results with the four varieties we used to mm -hmm. let us know we had something. Sure. See, when we start a new product, we started testing on our properties. Yeah. And if we like it, then it goes to our pro staff. Sure. Mm -hmm. If they like it, then we start asking, then we start looking for particular people. Like there's a guy by North Dakota, just 20 miles from Canada in North Dakota, that uh, is a contact of ours that we planted, we sent him our northern beans to test. We get a guy in New York. And, uh, so before it ever, once we like it, then before we take it to market, we're sending it to you. Yeah. And then we, if you guys like it, then we're sending it even farther. Sure. So, you know, we're probably, it'd probably take, I don't even think we could That's do it in five years. That's why I told years. guys yeah. to come up with another bean blend if, if we're starting to look at it, but sure, it, it'll never be as good as the bean blend we got now. I can take my sunglasses off so I look like a human being. <laughs> <laughs> in just a second. That's a I'm, re I'm recording now. So if you want to, if you guys want to just go on with it, okay. it's great. So the key to killing big bucks consistently is you got to hunt them on the properties where they spend their daylight hours. You don't want to use food to try to suck them in off your neighbor because they'll just stay, they're going to bed where they feel the safest. Mm -hmm. So the key to killing them consistently is you got to get them to bedding on your property consistently or you got to hunt on the property where they're bedding. If you're just one property off, your odds are probably 25% of what they were if you're on the same property where that deer's bedding. Mm -hmm. So... More than focusing on food and, you know, and your cover strips and all that, you need to be focusing on a big bedding area to get them bucks staying here every day. When the sun comes up every day, they're here. They're mm. not leaving until the sun goes down. Interesting. There's nothing a, a mature buck needs more than security, seclusion from human intrusion. And if you can provide it, you're going to have them. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a minimum number of, like, acreage? The of bigger, the better yeah yeah do you do you follow the men, the mentality of like the separate buck and doe bedding and like uh, the way that all works that's just a uh Come somebody on, trying Eric, to be smarter than idea. everybody else um and now i think we make it too complicated sometimes killing big bucks is easy once you see it happen it's so simple that the next one becomes a little easier and the next one be, by, by the time you kill a half a dozen of them it's like you can just see when you go onto a property you just see that that's where this needs to be that's where that needs to be here's where you need to be hunting I, it's so obvious because the reason you want the deer bedding up on this part of your property because nobody can hunt the edge of it you got a road on two sides there's nobody gonna sit on the road and hunt yeah so well it's going to be the cover is going to be so thick here anyway that they're not even going to be able to see a deer in here unless it steps out on the road yeah uh, i'd get them bedding up here and the food would be over there behind your house and i'd catch them in between hmm. i would probably take this field and put it into trees and shrubs and then just let nature take its course keep the mower and fire out of here 
Mm -hmm. The bottom field I may put in grass. Switch grass I think would be your best bet. Real world switch grass. Have you seen the patches that I've Kevin seen you standing on next to it? Yeah. yeah. What you'll have on it too is you'll have that strip of clover around the edge. So we're talking about a green food source. You got that strip of clover around the edge to do a control burn. Mm. So when when you do that, that gives you some green food source, but it also gives you a way to maintain those native grasses and burn them like you need to. Okay. And see what's going to happen if you get the deer bedding up here and, and their foods over there. There's going to be some place along here where those those deer are slipping down. Yeah. Well, then you come in off the road just down right through that in. creek, or there is a creek right there. Right? Yes. You come right creek. down the creek and you come right up with a north wind blowing your scent right back out to the road right down that creek bed and if there's several trails where they're crossing well you drop some trees and you make them and you make them a good crossing and, yeah. and concentrate all that traffic right there you slip in with light. and you can do the same thing over there with the south winds cut you a little path and your south winds blowing onto your neighbor more reason for the deer to stay out of there exactly yeah so in the the bottom area down here that you're talking about putting switchgrass What's your thoughts about putting like wildflowers and things like that for, uh, for like browse forbs and? Uh, I like keeping the food and the cover separate. And the yeah. reason for it, when a buck get, is hungry and he wants to get up and eat, I want him going. To, I don't want him just standing up and eating at his feet. I want him getting up and moving because when he moves, he's vulnerable to hunting pressure. Yeah. And uh, so that's why we got the bedding cover on one end of the property with this plan, and we got the food clear at the other. The transition zone in between is where you're going to kill most of them. Interesting. Would you design anything down there to make it a pinch point, or just? Oh, yeah, possible, yeah. Okay. I think that creek's going to do a pretty good job for you, though. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying leave the big areas itself as a bedding, and then stay out of stay out of this the, side. Use the dam, and then this creek as your pinches. Yeah. Because they all cross when we, well, it's, it's a dry pond is what it is. When we drove over that, all the, almost all the deer walk over that dry pond. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them do. It's a high spot, but. Well, as this comes together, the deer trails are going to be, or the, the preferred paths are going to be obvious. I mean, yeah. blatantly obvious. Yeah. You're probably, if you do this right in 10 years, this hundred acres will have more deer on it than the thousand acres that surrounds it. Now ask Kevin about my place. I mean, you come to my place, it's 120 acres, but I guarantee you I've got more deer on the 120 acres than the rest of my township. Really? Yeah. I'll be darned. Multiple mature bucks at one time. Yeah. Hmm. And, and the other thing you need to think about is Think about your property here as, as one square on a giant checkerboard of, if using an airplane looking down from 30,000 feet on your property, it's just one little square on it, and there's all these other squares on the checkerboard. You gotta do everything you possibly can to make your square different than the ones around it. Mm -hmm. a, a deer needs to, that that's in the deer's eyes, that your square needs to just stand out about to everything else. around it. Okay. What about the creek crossings down here? I mean, they could go, run, go uh, around. If they do, you're not going to be able to cover every single deer trail. Yeah. You need to give the deer the heart of the property. Just yeah. give it to them. And you're hunting the edges with the wind always blowing out. Yeah. Hmm. What if my neighbor comes to, of course, I mean, say he's hunting on the other side of the fence 20 yards in in a tree stand, and my main food source is there, and he's hunting with a north wind. I mean, the deer. Uh, he's, he's not going to help you by any means, but uh, the deer are going to become accustomed to feeling safe on your whole property, actually. Really? Yeah, now that doesn't mean they're going to go downwind to him and just eat like nothing's going on. Yeah. They're not, but it, it's definitely not a good thing. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, anything you don't need for income, yeah. you know, whether it's crops or hay, mm -hmm. needs to either be one of two choices good food or good cover. Yep, exactly. And you're gonna need more cover than you're gonna need for the food until you see at a certain point you've that got you enough higher numbers. Coming. The other thing that does is in late season when you got good food source for late season, mm -hmm. we've seen this happen on several different places. But there'll be bucks that come in that, that like you're talking about these bucks that go six miles from here. Why are they there six miles now? Whether it's a bully buck or it's food source. Sure. So you'll start dragging deer to your mm -hmm. property, and there'll be deer that actually end up staying here. Yeah. They end up finding the food sources here. They find the covers here. 
One thing about a, a big area of these bedding grasses too that I've seen, <clears throat> my first farm was 44 acres and about 20 of it was some wooded draws and some little fields. So we took the four acre and six acre field and put it in a CRP plan with grasses. Sure. And what I've seen over the years, this is what happens is, them group of bucks come in when they're in velvet right now, they're training. Well, they're, those older bucks are training those younger bucks where it's safe. So right now on them mm -hmm. areas, you'd have a few bucks. So at one day I seen 13 bucks and one really big one jump out of that little four acre CRP field and go towards a little bitty clover patch. And what happened was I got to look at that and you start looking, you start thinking those two year olds and those three year olds, those year and a half olds have just been trained by that old buck where to come and where it was safe. So you can shoot those top end bucks off and those younger bucks come back in there the next year. Once they have a good solid sanctuary, whether it's four acres, six acres or 30 acres, they'll train those, train those bucks that this is the sanctuary. This is where we come to. This is where we summer together. We'll fight it out when it comes season. We'll just, you know, just decide who has the dominance in this area. But they train, and those become mm -hmm. where all them bucks come to those areas. Gotcha. You get to the point where you won't want to fill your tag early because there's going to be new bucks show up throughout late the entire season. season. Mm -hmm. And the biggest ones are going to show up in the late season. You want to make sure you got a buck tag left. <laughs> yeah. I, I've well, seen it. And here's the deal. Is I'm, I love, like I said, I love deer hunt but like my dying passion is shed hunting mm -hmm. so i mean all this is like screaming wonderful in my ears i'm like late season think how many sheds could be on this hundred acres mm -hmm. you know cool 